the Joe Rogan experience. Do you know Magic the Gathering is now racist? <laughs> I don't even know what Magic the Gathering is. It's some what dorky it? game that that nerds play. Oh, uh, sorry. How nerds. is it, how is it racist? Um, I don't know. I was just read. I only saw the title of the article that they're they're trying to cancel Magic the Gathering. I'm like, oh Christ! <laughs> I thought that's what you guys liked. I thought they liked Magic the Gathering. I, I have no idea. Everything's 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 problematic. Everyone's getting canceled. It's amazing how many people did blackface. Yeah, it's very <laughs> strange. It's very strange. <laughs> it's, it's very strange. I mean, it was on, it was on primetime TV, yeah, right? Yeah, a bunch of times. Yeah. I mean, like in the modern world, oh, primetime yeah, yeah. TV. Jimmy Fallon was doing, well, he's doing a Chris Rock impression, which, by the way, you used to be able to do. When I was in high school, my friends were Mr. T for Halloween. Nobody gave a fuck. Nobody was like, Jimmy, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, you're Mr. T for Halloween. It was never like a problem. It's yeah. very, it's a very strange thing, you know, like you can do whiteface, no problem. Here it is. What is this? Magic the Gathering. Invoke prejudice card. So mm. that's a, <clears throat> it's an enchantment card, which restricts the caster's opponent to only using summons that match the skin color of their opposing creatures. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is, you, if you brought me on to talk about this, I should leave now <laughs> about, <laughs> about Magic the Gathering. If no. This is why I'm here, man. We're in a it bad way. It <laughs> just shows how fucked up everything is. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of thin skin out there right now, apparently. I just don't, I mean, it seems like a perfect storm. Like if you wanted to engineer the downfall of society, you would do it in several steps. You would have a reality show president where everybody's mad at him and, and then all the liberals get their feathers in a ruffle and everybody gets real super uptight and, and then there's this big divide between the left and the right that's kind of, you know, manufactured. And then you'd have this disease. Just lock everyone inside. Yeah, unprecedented. Lock, every, shut down the economy. Force people to not work. So if your business falls apart, you could be the most hardworking, diligent, disciplined person who's always at work an hour early, always has your I's dotted and your T's crossed, and you still go broke. And you're still fucked. And then you have this George Floyd thing. And then... Boom. It just ignites the power keg. The other thing that you have to wrap around all this is this social media, which mm. is, you know, I'm only going to post things that are just going to completely make everyone that sees whatever I'm posting emotional and, and filled with rage. Whether you're on the left or you're on the right, my goal is to enrage people. That's mm. the goal. And then that just gets spun up over and over. So you're taking all these little incidents and you're multiplying them times thousands and thousands of views. Yeah. Like when yeah. he was Tony Soprano. Oh, yeah. And he's not, and he wasn't like that. That's the other thing. He was more like a hippie. You know, he was very laid back. You know, he wore like Birkenstocks and like a bandana on his head. And Big music guy. He didn't really talk like that. He was. Uh, yeah. I wipe my ass with your face. Hey, hey, big music guy. You know. <laughs> yeah, he, he was. He not. never wanted to do a talk show. You know, Joe. I I would say, why don't you? Everyone thinks you're Tony Soprano. Right. Why don't you pick whether it be Letterman or, or whatever, and show them. The real Jim, you're a very intelligent guy. I mean, he's not that guy at all. Matter of fact, he would say to me, like before the season, uh, let's go down and have dinner at Il Cortillo, which I ran into mm -hmm. you there yeah. one time. Let's go down to Murray Street. I want to start getting back into the swing of things because he wasn't, he didn't hang around with those guys. He wasn't that guy at all. But he didn't. He never did a talk show. He did 60 Minutes. He wouldn't do uh, any of the talk shows. He wow. said, I'm not interesting. Wow. He wouldn't do anything. And he didn't grow up around that. He grew no. up in Jersey. He went to Rutgers University. He was, you know, an actor, theater guy. I tell yeah. you what's funny. Uh, you know, I, I, I wrote a kid's book called Nicky Deuce, and it turned it into a movie, and Michael's in it, and Paulie Walnuts, and uh, Johnny Sack, and I was in Jim's trailer, and uh, he had just did the movie with Brad Pitt, a mob movie. And uh, he said, Harvey Weinstein uh, called. He wants me to do Letterman. I said, I don't do talk shows. And uh, and he gets calling, and he says he got fucking nasty with Jim. <laughs> and Jim said, I will beat the fuck out of Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> he fucking calls me again. I will beat the fuck out of him. For the money he paid me, I'm not fucking doing it. 
Swear to God. Wow. And this is all before the Harvey Weinstein shit, when he was still the king shit. This is 2012, you know. When you see that Academy Award speech thank you compilation where all the people go up, all the various people that uh, eventually talk shit about him go up and praise Harvey Weinstein. It's, I never saw it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so bizarre. Yeah. It's so strange. Because they were intimidated. Yeah. That he had that much power over yeah. people's careers and they didn't feel like their voice would be heard or that people would, you know, take them seriously. He that would he'd know have, find a way to, to fuck you, basically. You know, what fuck a, you up. He would know character. me. He yeah. would know me uh, every three or four times. Like, I run into him in Madison Square Garden and there's a restaurant, Rebecca Grill, which he uh, had owned a piece of at one point. And give you a half ass hello maybe he was way above i was beneath him mm -hmm. you know? yeah he never got punched in the face is that what it is i, I heard jason Priestley punched him in the face though. jason at Priestley? a party yeah yeah i heard that he got out of line and jason Priestley punched him in the face wow i think nobody beat the shit out of harvey weinstein and wow. it wouldn't be that difficult he could fucking hardly breathe. He's smoking chain smoking right. he wasn't a tough guy no. he was tough with assistance you know where do you think this escalates to do you have a, a map in your mind of where the territory is? Yeah. I mean, I would say there are several ways it could go. But unfortunately, the dynamics look almost unresolvable if somebody does not speak for the movement. And with it being unresolvable, you've got a conflict between rural people and urban people. You have a conflict between... Um, Blacks and those who are self-declared allies, and ally doesn't really mean ally, but uh, foot soldiers on behalf of this movement and people who won't go along with it. And what I'm trying to raise people's awareness of right now is that there's something in us being raised in the U.S. There's something in us that thinks that the great leap forward in China cannot happen here, that what happened in Cambodia cannot happen here, hmm. that Nazi Germany cannot happen here. Right. Um, and, you know, the Soviet Union couldn't happen here. I don't know what characteristic it is that people think makes it impossible. I don't think it's impossible. I think if there is a characteristic that makes it unlikely, it is the structure. It is the Constitution, which I would argue is showing its age, but nonetheless, the values that America aspires to, the reason that the world does pay attention to us and still, even with all of our brokenness, allows us to lead it, that reason is that the values that were described were honorable, even if, they, even if we didn't meet them. But what we aspired to be was great. And uh, I, you know, I resent Trump's uh, Make America Great Again because there are populations for whom it has simply never been great. Right? So I, I think that last A in MAGA is just a finger in the eye for people, and it was designed to be. But the structure, what it aspires to be is great, and heading in the direction in which it could be great for everybody is obviously the right thing to do. But what we are now doing, and the thing that troubles me most about this movement, is that if you listen to it closely, and I have listened to it very closely, it is explicitly about disassembling the very things that make the West marvelous right it is anti-science no i feel bad for any listener we want to make a public apology yeah already we fucked this thing up we're both having trouble Cheers. thinking to 2020 to 2021 the greatest year of all we're gonna make this is what do they call it a mulligan those dudes who play golf oh do you get another one what's a mulligan mean do you gotta do over hey, let's just scratch this whole year <clears throat> that'd be great i like to toast to things people don't agree with like at the last minute they've already committed and you should be like to 9 11 and then you've already clinked how rude. I know. I think there's going to be a lot of good that comes out of this year. I really do. Uh, this I like talking about positive stuff. Like, What are you thinking? Is <sighs> Well, I think people are realizing that society and civilization hangs on by a thread in some cases. And, you know, when a series of events can happen, it can derail our life radically. And I don't think people were really aware that that was possible before. I think there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of competing mindsets and com competing ideologies, and there's a lot of anger mm -hmm. going on in the world right now. And then there's this fucking fear that comes with a pandemic. Everything, like, pandemics ramp up everything. Like, 
This is how you have to think about it. We're thinking about it as just a pandemic, but it's also a, a, there's a mind disease, like a fear disease that's sweeping through the land too. Right. And I, I feel like it's like like your 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 resources are being used up in so many different directions that it's like you're a little overrun. It's one of the reasons why people are reacting so violently to things lately. There's everything is just ramped up, and I feel like there's there's like a certain level of other things that you can tolerate in your life when you have so many things compounding and piling on top of each other. It's like the reason why they say that people get road rage is because it's not just you're in a car and someone does something stupid, but your, se your senses are heightened because you know you're going 60 miles an hour. So you're very aware. It's a very different feeling. Right. I didn't even consider that when yeah. I thought when I first heard about. I thought road rage is just people being a pussy, like you're yeah. being mean while you're locked in this little box because you mm -hmm. know that you can't. Nobody can say anything to you. Yeah. But it's not just that. It's fear, like because you're fucking driving fast and it's like if everybody fucks up, if someone's texting you and going into your lane, yeah. you could die. So because of that, because we have this in our head. It causes us to be like extra ramped up. And I think that's how we are right now with everything. Because of COVID, even if you don't have COVID, even if you're not worried about COVID, what it's done is it's made everybody ramp up. So everybody's almost got road rage. So like everybody yeah. is like a little bit more stressed out than they've ever been before, a little bit more ramped up, and everything gets exaggerated and everything gets blown out. Yeah. And there's so many more instances of scary things that you're being seen in the news and so few instances of really nice things. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, what a I, weird combination of things to, to try to manage. <laughs>